Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my fourth live stream. I hope you can hear me okay. And uh, we'll have some fun today. If someone could put in the chat that I sound okay and you can hear me, that would be great. Uh, a couple things I wanted to start with. I know I got some pushback on feeding. Um, some of the old wives' tales were to feed the birds upon return from the race is a very light mix, like a barley mix, a canary seeds, or something like that. I just want to let every to be clear that the first meal after a big workout is the most important meal for recovery. So feed your birds whatever they want. Load them up with the fat seeds, the 16% protein. When they come home from the race or a major workout, let them eat. Don't, don't try to skimp and feed them bottle or light mix. You want to get as much feed into them as possible to help with recovery. Also, I mix up like a... Um, a water that helps them uh, recover. I put a link in the description of what I use there. So for starters, uh, we can get going. Uh, my first question for short distance, 80% barley for, on six days. How many days of training, one or two? For short distance, I usually train the birds Tuesdays and Thursdays, weather permitting. So I keep them on the barley mix. They race, they eat the rich feed when they come home on the Saturday. If you haven't seen it, I did a video, uh, master feeding and master racing. I put it in the link, uh, I put it below. So I tend to train Tuesdays and Thursdays each week. I don't loft fly. Uh, my systems are for fanciers that do not have a lot of time. Now, if I had, I was retired and could spend all day at the lofts messing with the pigeons, I'd probably do things different. But if you like me and you don't have a lot of time, that's how my systems are designed. So my birds, they race on Saturday. They probably train 35 miles on Tuesday. And I like them to fly at least an hour on Thursday. We ship again on Friday for short distance. So that seems best. I will put them on a training truck. They may fly an hour, 20 minutes sometimes an hour and a half if I if that's available that doesn't hurt them but usually two training tosses a week for me and they race on the weekends uh, uh, what are you feeling with young birds foraging on the ground they have plenty of vitamins and minerals in the loft should I scare them off the ground it's funny usually when they have the vitamins and minerals in the loft they don't forage on the ground so much my birds tend, they don't go to the ground hardly at all when I'm actually letting them out. I would not really worry about it. Just be careful. Don't add anything to the lawn, like any um, weed killer or anything like that. It could be devastating, but no, it's not going to hurt them. You may want to worm them a couple of times during the, before the season and during the season, just in case they ate some rabbit droppings or something. But again, I wouldn't stress about it. Many of the Europeans and even myself, if they go on the lawn, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, what vitamins do you give young birds from weaning to the first race? Well, I have a whole bunch of different things I do. Um, I just buy the cheapest vitamin electrolyte attractor supply. You can see that in my video on what I do weekly for my old bird team. I put the link below. It's just a cheap vitamin electrolyte. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to spend a ton of money on vitamins. And I uh, use Red Cell, the horse wormer. I mean the horse wormer, the horse vitamin. Uh, Red Cell has been around forever. I use it for the iodine. So at least once a week, they'll get a vitamin and electrolyte. And once a week, they'll get the Red Cell, one teaspoon to the gallon, two terrific vitamins. The minerals are more important. I'm not too crazy. Worrying about uh, vitamins, I'm more worried about the minerals. And again, I have all the mixes in front of them at all times. And my brother changes it out pretty regularly. Let's see. Uh, just wondering how you manage the cocks in hands on race day. If you fly them both on the same race. Yes, um, we race... The cocks under McLaughlin lofts and the hens, their celibate hens, they race under Dan McLaughlin. So they both race the same race. Usually the hens come home, go in their loft. The cocks come home, go in their loft. They're separate buildings. Uh, they're both, they all fly celibate. There's no motivation or anything like that. They fly to the perch. Um, all that motivation stuff. I know we've talked about it before. You can watch my video on motivation, but you may help one, you're going to hurt 20. 
Uh, motivation helps you, the fancier, more than it helps the pigeons. So the pigeons fly for the love of the lofts. They fly because of their inform. So we fly all the same pigeons um, each week. We fly cocks and hens. Sometimes the hens run in the widowhood loft. No big deal. I take them out maybe an hour later. But usually 90% of the time, my best racing hens just go home and fly into the hen loft, the celibate hen loft. They don't go into the widowhood loft. And um, the cocks really, they, they never go into the, the hen loft. It's about maybe 30 feet from the cock loft. And uh, I hate to say it, but I find the girls are, the girls are smarter. And I was strictly a widowhood cock racer for forever, since the late 70s until about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I started racing hens. And the hens are better. The hens are smarter. And uh, tough for me to admit. Let's see. Can you address chronic paratyphoid in birds? Your method for treating with vaccination. Whew. Um, pigeons carry salmonella. I mean, you're not going to eliminate it. Um, it's If their immune system is really strong, they tend to fight it fairly, fairly well. But even with vaccinations, you're going to have a bird occasionally that gets salmonella. I don't panic about it. Um, I like the salmonella vaccine, the KM1. It's uh, Dr. K produced it, produced it in the USA. It has this adjuvant, which really boosts the immune system. And if you do get a pigeon with a lump in the wing and you give it one ML twice a week for three weeks, usually a few weeks later, the lump goes away and the pigeon will be fine. I've had birds come out of quarantine with lumps in the wings and I've treated them like that. Just no medication, just giving them the salmonella vaccine, the KM1. Um, and again, I did a video on it over a three week period in a big dose. The normal dose is 0.25 ml. I give one ml and uh, it can cure them. But if you're having a chronic paratyphoid, a salmonella problem, most likely you got a little weakness in the family. I would vaccinate. I wouldn't treat the birds extensively. Maybe treat them the first time, treat them all with a enrofloxin for 10 days, then vaccinate them for salmonella, then continue every year, vaccinate for salmonella and let the weak ones take themselves out of the population. Um, you shouldn't have too many issues. If everything is good, the birds are healthy, they have space, minerals and all of that. Uh, let's see. What about L-carnitine? L-carnitine is a supplement that I used years ago. I haven't messed with it since. Not a big real opinion of it. Again, many of these things, they, they come about and people get crazy and they use them. And the big thing now is beet juice. And years ago, back in the 90s, I was giving them creatine, monohydrate, and um, glutamine and I was using alconitine and again not I have didn't really notice any difference I don't worry about it too much uh, something I do like is vitamin b12 for the long distance races I'll add some b12 to the water it's not something I've talked about but I buy it at tractor supply and um, maybe put well two teaspoons or so to the gallon just to, it's a I think the b12 is a good but again would make a big difference probably not if you are feeding young and racing, what do you recommend we feed? If you are feeding young and racing, uh, oh, I think if the breed, if the parents are feeding young and you're racing, you have to feed the parents a, a rich, good feed. Uh, you're at a big disadvantage if you're racing pigeons mated and raising babies are sitting on eggs or, you know, as for systems, I find the celibate hen system is the number one system racing, you know, the widow unmated cocks, number two, after that roundabout, probably number three, where they're, you're mixing them and you're going around and around. And, and then the worst system would be the natural pigeons on babies, but you would have to feed them. The only thing is if you're feeding them the rich feed so they can feed the babies, you're just going to have to work the parents more to get the body weight right. You really can't control feed if you have babies in with the race team. The difference between malted pigeon barley to regular barley. Can you use malted barley in your feeding system? I um, can't find covered barley at DPO where I'm in Eastern Connecticut. As far as I know, malted barley is, it goes through a process to cause the barley to like have loads of sugar. 
you really can't use malted barley. I know people that have used malted barley, the birds get fat, they eat it excessively. So you have to find a decent barley. And if you're in Connecticut, email me. Um, there's a grain dealer, I think in East Windsor or something like that, or possibly you can have Global Pigeon Supply deliver if you get a group together and you can get some good barley, good depurative and to help you with your feeding. Um, below, we have Seven Hills Law, Flow Frank. I posted a link to the Hawks Repellent Spray. Wonder if you like seen it and what you take on it. You know, I haven't seen it. I'll take a look. I know there's some fanciers that are like spraying a, like a big pink spot under their pigeon's wings. And they say it's helping with hawks. Uh, for me, I haven't tried it, but I'm willing to try anything to take the pressure off. And I know there's some fanciers that have had luck. So yeah, we'll take a look and I can put the link below this video after the live stream. And if people want to try it, I appreciate it. And again, we learn from each other. We can learn something from everyone, and which is really good. Have I ever used NutriBlend green and gold pellets? Um, well, Jeff, I've I've used pellets for years because it was easy. I would I didn't live at the lofts and I would just fill the feeders with pellets in the off season or during breeding. I think they're a good product, but I think they should be supplemented. I don't think it should be the main feed. I think you should put it in a separate feeder and feed grain. What I found when babies are uh, raised on grain, their insides, their, their crop, not necessarily their crop, but their gizzard, their intestines, everything is stronger when they're digesting grain. This, this insides have to work at digesting the actual seeds. The pigeons have a stronger intestines, a stronger gizzard. It's better for them. So for racing, I would recommend grain and I would feed the pellets as a supplement. I have feeders of uh, grain with my breeders and I have a feeder full of pellets. They probably eat 90% grain mix to 10% pellets, maybe less. And I just use a chicken pellet because of the minerals and the protein, the calcium. They don't eat many of the pellets, but they do eat some. So my advice, if at all possible, feed the grain, supplement with pellets. I know if you guys could like uh, this stream and I guess it helps with the algorithms and uh, everybody always says, you know, like and subscribe so i figured i'd do the same thing how do you get how do you get the birds to pick on saturday i guess which birds i select for the races uh, i usually grab go through them i'll crate them all up and i'll just quickly run through them i run them in the baskets i don't have to hand catch the pigeons i like run them down the aisle into the baskets and the same with my widow hens i have a I like a trap door on my flight pen. I put them out and I just chase them into like these big shipping baskets. Then I go through them and I ship the birds with the best body weight. Anything that seems a little heavy, I'll leave home. But the most conditioned birds, the most buoyant, the light and corky type pigeons, nice snow white wattles. And as you know, I don't medicate ever. I never flock treat the birds. So my birds have like supernatural health. And when they're really shining, those are the ones that I'll ship to the race. Uh, do you worry about K factor when doing training tosses or races? You know, I've never looked at it. I think it has, it plays a factor, but again, no, I haven't paid attention to it. If you have the time and you want to look at it, it might be something to, to consider. But again, I haven't considered it, but I do think it has, a, it does play in the birds a bit. Uh, what supplements are you using during training? Again, my birds during training, um, it's just really grain and all the mineral mixes. I don't go crazy with the supplements. They have the feed and every possible mineral imaginable in front of them. And during training, they might get vitamins and electrolytes, the cheap tractor supply stuff um, once a week. They'll get the red cell once a week. I might give them um, the avian solution, the oregano product. I really like that product. I use that um, occasionally before the season, but during the season, they come home to it. When they return home, I make a mixture up, including some of that oregano product. So they recover really fast. And that's a good, uh, it's like a natural antimicrobial. And um, again, I put the link to that video, what I do each day during the racing season. And you can stop that once the season begins. Let's see.
I have seen you use Borax for baths. What if they drink it? Yeah, I've been doing it since I was a little kid. I've been putting Borax in the bath water. And I mean, I just do like a, a handful to maybe two gallons of water. They don't seem to drink it very much, but I've never noticed any ill effects with it. So I wouldn't worry. It's great. It's um, It kills the parasites and their feathers come out beautiful. And I don't use it during the race season. I'm always worried that, you know, something's going to throw the birds off. But during the off season or for your breeders and stuff, it's, it's an excellent product. And it's funny, when I was a little kid, I used to do taxidermy. And that was, uh, they used to have us rub borax and the feathers of pheasant and things like that before we'd mount them to kill all the parasites. So it definitely has a, a positive effect. Can you touch again on your young bird convention birds flying to the perch, cutting flights and sending to races weekly? Well, I'm handling this year for the IF convention. So I've been taking pigeons in. So the birds that arrived before May 1st, I just took the very tip of the ninth flight and the 10th flight off of them. Now, the birds that arrive starting tomorrow, I'm just going to take the tip of the ninth flight off. I usually I'll wait two weeks because they're kind of different ages and I'll pull the ninth flight. Um, the problem is when you pull the flight, you can't put any pressure on the quill. So if you pull and you're putting pressure on the quill, the flight will never grow back correctly. So you have to pull the flight without putting any pressure where the flight grows from. So on these first group of convention birds, I'll pull the ninth. And when it's about maybe three quarters of the way grown in, I'll pull the 10th. The next group, I'm just going to pull the ninth. I'm figuring they're going to be maybe out to their ninth flight for November race. Um, I'll get the birds settled. I have a big settling cage out there now. I'm going to settle them in groups. And uh, right now they're on the avian solution, the uh, Van Beek solution, a Van Beek it's sold by Jeds. It's the only place I see it. It's an oregano product. And they're going to live on that oregano product right through for the next three months. It's going to be in the water every single day. It really helps cutting out any kind of young bird sickness. So I've been pretty lucky using that product. And I don't like to use medication. So I will treat you if I have a convention bird and it gets sick. I'm going to treat it individually, but I'm not going to flock treat the birds ever. So I use the, um, the Van Beek avian solution great product and i will pull the flights only because i'm racing the convention normally i don't mess with it i don't worry that much about young birds but because of the convention birds i want to put everybody's uh, pigeon in the best position to win um i'm from sydney australia we start racing the first race um may 15th what are the tips and what can i do i would say feed like i feed uh, watch my master master feeding your master racing video it'll give you a big advantage most everybody ships their birds too heavy to the races biggest problem i have now is all my competitors feed like me and these guys are retired and they just mess with pigeons from morning till night so you know i have to uh i need a good pigeon and i have to do things right but again when you have all kinds of time it's tough but if you feed them correctly uh, they're they're trained moderately their body weight is right they're healthy it, they fly to the top. Can a long distance bird win a 350 mile one loft race at 2000 yards per minute? Yeah, anything's possible. I mean, you see it. Normally though, the extreme long distance birds, you know, don't do that. But again, yeah, I mean, anything's when it's winds blowing that well, that hard and it's that fast. Sometimes pigeons just get in the front bunch and keep coming. Normally it's more of a middle distance type pigeon that would win a, a race like that. How many weeks before the first race do you start the 80% barley system? Well, with my old birds, because they're not molting, they're not growing, I started probably four or five weeks out because I had to get their body weight down. I don't loft fly before the season. I just start training. So I get the body weight down. I get them um, hungry. I take them maybe a quarter of a mile. They come home. They run in. I take them you know, maybe back a second time, a half mile, a mile. I start them slow. I get them out 35, 40 miles within about two weeks and I start racing. So with the young birds, though, I'll start maybe a week before. Uh, during the whole training and exercising, they'll be on maybe 30% barley because they are growing and molting. 
But about a week before the first race, I'll put the youngsters on the 80% barley to race throughout the season. Uh, how, how old can you ship birds to one-loft races? I would suggest ship them at two months old. Like um, wean them, vaccinate them. I, when I wean them, I vaccinate them for PMV and something else. I use combination vaccines. So say PMV rotavirus, and then I've also poxed them. And I mixed the pox up and I did a video on how I do that. And it stays about two or three weeks mixed in a little syringe. And I put a droplet through the skin on their leg. So they are vaccinated for PMV and pox. Usually about two weeks later, two, well, a little over two weeks later, I'll hit them with a booster, maybe a PMV salmonella combination. And then a week or so after that, ship them to the one loft race and instruct the one loft races not to vaccinate the pigeons because they're all vaccinated. And if you instruct the one loft race to do that, they don't want any more work than they have to. So if they know your birds are vaccinated, they can take them, they can list them and put them in. But they're better off fully vaccinated in seven or eight weeks old when they go to the one loft races. It gives you an advantage. They won't lose them. They're more apt to get sick if you send them too young. Some of these convention birds I'm receiving are just out of the nest. And I wish the people had waited a little longer. Uh, next question, would you raise hens and cocks together? I think if they're talking mixed sexes. I do raise them in the same races, but they're separated sexes. If you have mixed sexes, you're at a pretty big disadvantage. It's like the worst system. Um, everything is better than natural, like we used to fly 50 years ago. So I would keep them separated sexes. And if you don't have the space, I've helped fanciers where they've had the the race, the cocks out of the loft and they've kept the hens in a, a rabbit hutch on nearly 100% barley and the hens just flew weekly. That's the only time they got out where they flew the race and they came home, they would eat, they would go in with the cocks and then put them back in the rabbit hutch and they still flew awesome. They, usually they would beat the cocks. So separated sexes is best. You don't need you know to go crazy with the motivation and uh, mixed sexes would be the worst. Uh, hi, Frank, fellow Mass Fancy is here. This is my first season back. What do you think about scaring birds up? Yeah, you have to. After the birds are out bouncing around and uh, on the loft and fly into the house for a couple of weeks, and they, you almost have to start scaring them up to get them flying. So I will usually scare them up. And it's a blessing and a curse here that usually the hawks will chase them up. And uh, Within a couple of times out, they're up flying because of the hawks. But yeah, sometimes they get lazy and they will be extra, extra lazy if you're feeding them, say, 100% European mix or Versalaga champion or something like that. Mix in 30% barley once you start letting your youngsters out and they'll stay, uh, they'll fly much better and they'll fly a lot quicker and longer than if you were just feeding them um, a high protein, high fat mix. What do you think about feeding babies with syringes and what feed would you use? Now, I don't think there's any need of feeding babies with syringes. I do, I do bulb syringe all the babies full of water when I ship them to one loft races. If they have uh, grain in their system, like they ate early morning and there's grain throughout the system, the, the water will stay right in the crop. And Jed sells this bulb syringe with a long, very, very flexible, soft, soft rubber tube. Uh, I have syringe babies. Um, I've hand raised babies and you can buy the Exacta. It's a parrot, a baby parrot food mix. It's terrific. It's a, it's a powder. It dissolves really well. So if you had to hand syringe babies, use that by the Exacta mix, uh, Petco or something like that. It's terrific. It's very nutritious. And uh, you can hand feed babies with that if, if you had to. If not, let the let the parrots um, do the job. Let's see. I am one of those fanciers that works fairly well. The problem is it's very hard to get shipped to the USA from the UK. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult. You know, there are shipments going out of Belgium and Poland pretty regularly, but the importing is can be tough and takes a long time. I'm starting a team of 11 celibate hens, lots of old times and experienced races. Should I put them on widow and race them as widowed hens? 
I'm not exactly sure what you mean. If their old time is just raise them celibate, just keep them separated the sexes. They'll they'll fly terrific. <laughs> I have a five year old hen that just she's amazing. She had her best season last year at uh, at four, and she's been at the top two weeks in a row, and she's five. And but she's been on a she's been a celibate hen for years, and I think that yeah, just raise them. You'll be pleasantly surprised at how well they do. How often can the VBG be used during the race week? The that's the oregano solution sold by Jeds, and I use it during the racing season. They come home to it in the water. It's like it's good for the intestine, and I use it on day of return. But you could do it during the week, also one day, middle of the week. Nothing. Don't put anything in the water the day of shipping because they won't drink it. You want them to be well hydrated the day of shipping. Even the day before shipping, I usually don't put anything in the water. I want them to make sure that they're very hydrated. But a couple times a week is fine. Upon return and one time during the week is fine. For the breeders, you know, three or four times a week won't hurt them. And like I said, with my convention birds, they're going to stay on that um, from now right through to right through summer before I take them off that oregano product. If I have the time to do it, I just want the birds to perform as well as possible. Yeah, it's it's tough, you know, if you don't have the time. But if you feed them correctly, you keep the body weight right, it, it just eliminates all the training that's needed for the pigeon. So if you learn how to feed them, you can have a lot of success without a lot of time. Uh, how do you recover birds after a tough race? Well, with my pigeons, they come home to everything. I mix three different types of feed. I use the uh, the energy from Versalaga. I put the champion mix down and I the sneaky mix, which is all high fat seeds. And I let them eat whatever they want. That first day after the race for 24 hours or at least, you know, all day into the evening, they eat all that stuff as much as they want. I keep adding to it and they pick what they need. They pick what they want. Any late comers will also get to eat that the next day. Uh, if they come late, I want them to recover. And then in the water, I put in a link below what I mix when they return from the race. I have honey. I have vitamins, electrolytes. I use Roni, which is a great product for the intestine. It has some sugars in it. It has, uh, I think it has, well, it has like prebiotics. They're something that fuels the probiotics. It's, it's really a good product. And again, the information is in the link below. You can see what I do. And it's kind of like a weakened um, electrolyte with some oregano in it that helps them recover really, really quick. Um, let's see. Young birds, how long do you wait to put chip, chip bands on them? Well, I don't like losing my chip bands, so I tend to, you know, about a week before the first race, I'll chip the birds. Uh, the convention birds, I'll do them sooner only because I have to keep track and everybody will be wondering what's, you know, what the bird is doing or is it there or how's, how's it performed on training and all that. But, yeah, I'm not that concerned with putting the chip bands. They don't, they don't like the chip band. When they first put them on, they're fiddling with it. It's like, you know, it's like the first, if you've never worn a wristwatch, it's, it, you're like, you're touching it and playing with it at first until then you, after a couple of days, you don't even think about it. So at least a week before the first race, put your chip bands on. Do you trade old birds after the first race? Yeah, I don't usually let them out to fly. I'm too worried about the hawks. And I'm not feeding them enough, so they will fly. So I strictly train the birds during the old bird season, the celibate birds, both cocks and hens. We usually train Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I like them to fly at least an hour on the Thursday, and we ship the races on Friday. For long-distance races, we ship on Thursday, and I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll train on a Thursday and then ship them that evening. How do I measure to be sure you're using the 80%? I just, yeah, I just mix up like, uh, you know, a bucket at a time. I might throw eight coffee cans of barley and two coffee cans of champion mix and mix it all up. And, you know, I'm not too technical about it. Someone asked me recently, was that by weight or by volume? Well, barley lays less, less than champion mix. It's by volume. I just, you know, I'll use the regular one pound coffee can and mix it up like that. Maybe eight, eight to two or a four to one and uh, something along those lines, but it is by volume, it's not by weight.
What kind of barley do you feed? Rolled, steamed, sprouted? No, just regular barley in the husk. Um, it looks like a big fat grass seed. The rolled barley, any of that other stuff, I would stay away from. But find a good quality barley. Most of the grain dealers will have a good barley, whether you buy from Baden. Or I like the Baden barley. The Versella Lager barley is terrific. But I've used all different types of barley. And some of it isn't as high quality, but I've raced really well on barley that I thought wasn't the greatest. So it should be okay. Uh, pink spray under the wings. Does it prevent heart attacks, if any? I've seen it in some YouTube videos of European fancies doing this. I haven't tried it yet. It's something that I think I'm going to give it a shot. I have nothing to lose by putting the pink spray under the wings. Uh, anything that distracts the hawks, it makes it, you know, throws them off a little bit. And I just did a video recently. I have one of those big 20 foot um, air dancers, like you'll see out in front of a used car lot, with just the big arms are waving. And I get my youngsters used to it. I push it right up against the loft and they're out walking around and settling. And this 20 foot thing is doing this and dancing. And the hawks won't hit them at the loft. I mean, if they fly off, they go into the trees or they're circling out or they're just starting to fly and they're 50 yards from the loft. Yeah, the hawks will hit them, but. Right on the loft, no, that thing is a, a savior for me. But I will try the pink spray, and I'll try it on a few to make sure it doesn't mess with the feathers, but I'll definitely try it. Let's see. What do you enjoy most, one loft race, a club race? Well, I'm one of the few fanciers that, that does both. I have a lot of success racing in my club and combine, and I have success racing in one loft races. I enjoy racing my own birds. I love the one-loffs, but I don't pay attention to the one-loffs. I watch them at the final race. Most people, a lot of people follow every training toss. I only pay attention at the final race. And even then I might wait until the results are up. There's nothing like the excitement of your own birds coming home after the race. And that's still, it still thrills me. I wish I had more time to just race pigeons and concentrate on racing pigeons. And I haven't been able to do that in, 20 something years. Let's see. Uh, have you ever used iodine in the water after birds come home from the race, helping them recover better and quicker? No, I don't. Uh, I know that, you know, 30 years ago, I bought like Blitz Farm and stuff in Belgium, but I use Red Cell, the horse vitamin and mineral. It has a lot of iodine. So once during the week, I'll use the red cell. I don't use it on the day of return. Maybe, maybe it'll be helpful, but I do use it during the week and I use it strictly for the iodine. I do one teaspoon or so to the gallon. Let's see. How often should I train my young birds if they're around three months old? Well, the thing with training the youngsters, you really just want to educate them. Unless the races are a few weeks away, you want to you want to baby them. You want to train them, but you don't ever want to hurt them. You want to stay away from the heat. And most of the fanciers make the big mistake. They get excited, especially the new guys. They start training months out from the first race and all that. It's useless. It, um, you're not creating any more fitness by training the birds weeks and weeks before the first race. If anything, educate them. Watch my video on educating young birds. And I think you, you might be impressed. Pick your days. Don't train more than every other day if you're training way out from the races. And then as you get closer to the races, you can ramp it up a little bit, maybe three weeks before the first race. But again, all that training weeks and weeks before the first race, especially if you're just going down the race course over and over and you're not mixing the birds, you're kind of wasting a lot of gas and a lot of time. Let's see. Can widowhood be beneficial to hens or only good for cocks? Well, when you say widowhood, I mean, I, I think so. You can race like widowhood hens and have them come home to the cocks, but I've done it. And uh, I won't use this Belgian's name because he's a, he's a famous European and he's a famous fancier. And back in 2013, he visited me and he, he sh I showed him my system. I said, this is what I do. And at the time I was winning national ace pigeons and all kinds of major awards with these celibate hens. He's like, no way, it, you don't do this. Where do you put the cocks? Where are the cocks? I said, no, there's no cocks. I said, they just fly to this section. And the, at the time I was racing the birds in my young bird section, in a section of my young bird loft. I didn't have a loft for the widowed hens. 
So he didn't believe me, thought I wasn't telling him the truth. So that overseas and I started wondering, I said, well, maybe I would do better if I had cocks waiting for my hens when they came out from the races or I show the cocks before I send them to the races. So I applied his system and I had a moderate season. I not want, I just had a decent season. I was disappointed. So fast forward to Vegas, we're out at the big Fred Schmelzer event in Vegas and he comes running up to me and he said, Frank, I tried your system. It works. And I said, yeah, I tried yours. It sucks. So he ended up winning one of the uh, top awards in Belgium race in my system. And I had a disappointing year. So again, the celibate hen system, it's, it's terrific. There's nothing like it. And uh, I think if you do it, you'll love it. Uh, we all know about your great old Van Reet family. What would you say still is your most favorite bird you ever had? Flying a favorite as a breed. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. I've had a lot of great pigeons over the years. I think uh, I fell in love with a pigeon in the mid-70s. Uh, his band number was like MVPC uh, 74554. And uh, he was a favorite bird bred by Ken Schwartz. And... I wanted that bird so bad. He was owned by a fancier in Boston. And I just loved the pigeon. He was a buoyant, corky, super feathered, just no weight to the pigeon. So my father waited uh, the Christmas of 77. He goes, we'll offer him $100 before Christmas and see if he'll sell the bird. So my father bought the bird in Christmas of 77. And then that changed my trajectory of my sport i mean i just dominated with his his first son won a big futurity by like 15 minutes and i just went on with children and grandchildren on that pigeon so then the lights went off i said oh boy i started selecting for these super feathered light buoyant pigeons and then my next superstar had bought a bird from jermaine imbrecht in 1983 what a breeder that sucker was these pigeons are still in my pigeons today and uh you know as the years go by you have these real pigeons that, that change you, that change the direction of your loft. And I've been lucky. You've had a lot of great pigeons and, you know, I've seen a lot of great pigeons, but I've, I've been blessed. Let's see. Uh, what makes the gearing special for you? I've had good luck with the gearing pigeons. I've, I've won some big, big races with the gearing pigeons, but it's funny. The, <laughs> the pigeon that gets no credit, they usually cross with my Durasa blonde pigeons and no one gets excited over the Jurassic Blonde pigeons, but everybody gets to see the gearings and the pedigree. And um, but they've been good pigeons. I mean, a lot of success all over the world with the gearings pigeons, and I've had a lot of good luck with them too. I've had really great luck with the Casbor pigeons. I've had super luck with the Sablon pigeons, and then I've got a blend of pigeons that I've had forever. They're a mix of like Maurice Cassatt, Steph Van Riet, um, Engels. They're kind of a blend of families i just keep mixing them up the best of the best and if they're successful i use them if not you know they kind of fall out of the population is it better to breed the pigeons in december january around march well i think they raise the best nicest babies in the springtime like my babies that'll be coming out of the nest now will be terrific the problem is for one loft racing you need them early so i paired like the second of january and uh if you're just racing them and breeding them for yourself, maybe start a little later. But if you're going to try to get them to the one loft races, you really have to start early. And, and with the winters we have, how harsh it is and cold and miserable that it makes it tougher to raise pigeons in the winter. Uh, what would you say is the best system for young bird racing? Darkness or light system? Well, I've only raised the dark system. I think the dark system is best for racing young birds. I think it's easy. And I did a video on the dark system, and uh, but I've never raced the light system. And again, there it is deceiving. If you race a system, your birds do better than they are. Like it's mostly system. So you you race a young bird system, you're getting ten on a drop, or you have a multiple good performers. Then you go to old birds, and all of a sudden the playing field is equal, and they're not that good. Well, yeah, it was a system. But if anything, I would race the dark system and follow what I say in that video, you know, there's real, there's real secrets to it. There's no rush to put them on the dark system and there's no rush to take them off this dark system. If you're racing the dark system, you want to keep them on the dark system at least a month into the season, into the race season. Um, let the sun come up natural in the morning and then shut the lights, shut the lofts down in the, in the afternoon. But that's the real secrets with the dark system. 
Let's see. Um, let's thank you for all the questions and hit the like button if you can. I think it really helps with the algorithm. And maybe after this is over, you can put a comment in and uh, I'll, you know, I'll answer whatever I can. Uh, what is the strain of bloodline of choice as for my favorite pigeons, as long as they're good pigeons. I don't usually get caught up on uh, the flavor of the month pigeons. Everybody tends to chase these hot pigeons and they go crazy and they get a lot of publicity. And Everybody has good pigeons. They, these famous, famous pigeons that you hear about, there's a neighbor that has just as good pigeons that doesn't have a website, doesn't publicize. And so I don't get too excited over um you know, the crazes that happen in the sport. If they're good, they're good, and I'll give them a try. But mainly I want to see pigeons that are winning for a lot of people and not people that are working really hard at it. Any professional pigeon fancier in Belgium will do well with any pigeons. But if you get the working guy and, you know, he's got a family and he's only entering seven, eight pigeons a week and he's having success, those are the, those are the pigeons you want. How many grams you give uh, per bird per day? You know, I don't really deal with grams. Uh, my hens, say I have 30 hens, and I'm giving them a small coffee can of the depurative mix each day. It's not a lot. <laughs> what I actually look at, it's not a lot. And I think the coffee can, I used to think it was one pound, but I think with inflation, they've actually reduced the ounces. It's only like 12 ounces. So it's a coffee can and uh, the smaller coffee can once a day and to my 28 hens and their body weight is perfect. But again, you can't feed like me and, and train like you. They're only out of the loft two days a week during the races and, and they fly really well. Uh, let's see. I have four youngsters around three months old. They do not want to fly and two hatched in my loft, the other two in the loft since three weeks. Well, you're gonna have to start chasing them up. They get lazy, put them on 30% barley, feed them once a day. When they start leaving the barley, they've had enough and they'll start flying, but you're gonna have to chase them. It, sometimes they just get fat and lazy. What is your view on forced flag flying the birds? How long do you fly them? For what distance is a race, 280 kilometers? How would you fly them around the loft? Well, with my pigeons, Excuse me, it's mostly done with body weight. I train them some before the season, and then they have the race, hopefully on Saturday, and then two training tosses during the week. If you can't um, take them down the road, I would at least fly, flag fly them two or three times for an hour during the week. A hour of flying around the loft is not the same as 35 minutes coming off a training toss. It's a lot more intense when they're flying on a training toss. They're going harder, they're going so the law fly is not as much work as a training toss. So you figure if you're going to flag them maybe um, three times a week for an hour. And again, you know, they don't need a ton of work if you're feeding them correctly. But I, I tend to just try to train them the best I can and do it with the feed. What are the best race in pigeon line? There's a million. I mean, there's good pigeons everywhere. And uh, you can find great pigeons, you know, no matter where. When I first started going to Belgium, 30, I'm trying to think when it was, in the 80s, uh, America didn't have the quality, didn't have the pigeons. But now even in America, everybody has great pigeons. So it was a lot easier to select good pigeons back then because people didn't have them. But now everybody has great pigeons and it's easy to find great pigeons. And like I had suggested before, you might want to buy pigeons off someone's race team, uh, late hatches off the widowers. I always tended to buy late hatches. You, you get the best deal and they're not picked over. And so you might have to wait a little longer to breed them, but you can save a fortune and get some really high quality stock. Uh, hi, Frank. Love you. Show how you vaccinated for pox twice because they weren't sure if it took. I, I usually can feel the takes on them. I don't usually vaccinate a second time. Uh, they usually take. And if they didn't, it's it's occasional bird. But the way I do it with the little droplet on the syringe, I always get a take. Um, uh, do you use heating for dryness? Do you use suction yeah, fans to get the bad air? My widowhood uh, cock loft, it, it's a big loft and the air doesn't move very well. So I have a fan, maybe a 15 inch fan up in the eave and it blows out all the time. 
So it's constantly drawing air out to bring the dust out. I haven't used heat. Um, I think it'd be beneficial if you wanted to warm dryness and warmth brings on form. I really haven't needed to. I mean, I can compete at the top without it. But if I was really serious, maybe I would put heated floors in and things like that, especially during the damp time of the year. When our important races come for old birds, it's usually uh, from the, you know, through June. And that's our best month for warm and dry. So that's that's usually where the birds are coming into their best form. But again, I think it could be good if you added heating to the lofts. But again, I haven't done it. Many of the Europeans do. How do I control humidity conditions in the summer? I, you know, I... My lofts are pretty spacious. If my widowhood loft, I can like close up the windows and everything and it's still pretty airy and the humidity drops like it only it would could be 100% outside and only like 65% inside. But again, I've, I've put less. Um, I, I'm not so concerned with it anymore. I mean, I'm just, they'll be fine. Keep the loft dry. A deep layer system will actually help dry the loft if you live in a humid area. But you know, you could add a little heat, but if it's ventilated right and the moisture isn't pouring in, you know, they'll be just fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you use any vitamins when you're breeding your youngsters? Yeah, I mean, my breeders get just a cheap track to supply vitamin electrolyte and um, red cell, the horse vitamin, about once a week. And uh, I don't go crazy. The minerals are much more important. Uh, when should I start training my pigeons before a marathon race? Well, it's a whole progression. Uh, my birds build up. We start with like 150 miles, 150 miles, 200, 200. We have a 300 mile this week. Then we'll race 400. Then we'll race a long distance race every other week. The secret with the marathon race is your birds should fly at least six hours, two weeks before the marathon. So I like to see my birds fly a 300 mile race before the long distance race where they'll fly anywhere from six to seven hours. And it builds that fitness. It builds that endurance. Very rarely will a pigeon be able to fly 12, 14 hours if it hasn't flown six or seven a couple of weeks before. So concentrate on getting your birds a six or seven hour flight two weeks before the marathon and they should be great. And then my birds race every other week so they'll race like a marathon every other week, that team. Can you do a video how you're feeding your celibate hands? Yeah, I'm going to do some videos when I'm feeding the girls, and I'll show how much I give them and uh, how they act and how quickly they eat, and that's something I am planning to do. Uh, on 50% barley, loft fly every day, pigeons fly max 15 to 20 minutes. I fed them till a handful of barley left. Yeah, I mean, if you feed them until a handful of barley left, they should fly more than that. I mean, my birds would probably fly like crazy if I gave them until they actually clean it all up. But I think it's best if you feed them once a day until they leave a little barley. But 15 to 20 minutes a day and um, racing on the weekend should be fine. Their body weight should be good. Uh, you know how the ownerships have the Europeans have ownership card for each band. What are your thoughts on the AU doing the same for USA fancies? I'm not sure. I mean, it's a, it's an added expense. I mean, I'd be fine with it, but it's another thing for us to all keep track of. And um, yeah, it's a good question. I don't think they'll do it, but it might be something we'll see in the future with all these. Uh, it might be another consideration. Maybe that would stop all these um, counterfeit bands. I mean, you can order whatever you want from China and uh, you can buy 2025 bands right now that look identical to the bands of today. So yeah, maybe the card with some type of um, UPC code, code or something on it would verify that the band is, is right. And the pigeons official. Uh, when you talk about perfect body weight, butt and grins, what is a perfect body weight? Well, man, it's perfect body weight to me is a feel. Um, I, I, you don't want to send your birds around to the races, even the long distance. You, you want to have them, the muscles lying a little flat, more V-shaped. Now, again, you don't want to feel bones. You don't want them, you know, to be all keel and skinny. But you, you want the muscles to be like lying a little more flat. You don't want them like this. You never want the meat out, you know, out by the keel. They're too heavy if they're like that. So once you feel it, and I've said before, ship your birds to a race, let them fly, say, 
four or five hours and then handle them. And that's how they should have handled when they went to the race. And so when they come home after a four or five, six hour flight, that's how they should handle going to the race. They shouldn't be round and full. The muscles should be lying down. They should be corky and buoyant. And uh, once you can nail feeding, it's going to make all the difference in the world. Uh, do you think is better perch for young birds? V perch or box perch using box perch? You know, it's funny. <laughs> I thought all these big giant perches and box perches and all that was, you know, more important and the birds would be comfortable and happy. And it seems like many of them perfectly fine on the V perches. Uh, in my widowhood loft, I have nest boxes on one side and pole perches on the other, only because when I moved to Oregon, my father sold all the nest boxes. So when I moved back, I only bought nests for one side of the loft. Well, you go into my widow and loft <laughs> and all the clocks sleep on the pole perches side. The, the nest boxes are empty. So what do we know sometimes? But my pole perch is a two by fours on edge. So it's about a three, three inch wide perch. But the clocks like that section better than the, the nest boxes. So again, how do we know sometimes? Uh, thank you for the gearings pair they bought from you. Can't wait to read in the Philippines. I hope they do super for you. Um, what do you prefer for celibate hens, box of V perches? You know, my celibate hens are on V perches. I think that's much, that's very important because you don't want them cuddling in the perches. And my V perches are along the walls and I have a petition that comes out about eight inches beside the V perches. So the pigeons can't look at each other and mate and, you know, just preen or whatever, but they can't see each other. So I have little petitions between the rows of V perches. I do have some box perches. Um, they're thin, small box perches, but most of the birds are on V perches and that's best for the celibate hens. Um, how often is too much bathed in a week? No, it doesn't. If your birds want to bathe, that's fine. I don't bathe that much. I don't have a lot of time. And if I put the bath pans in, I usually, you know, have to try to get my brother to dump them and it's another pain. So my, most of my birds can go out in the flight pens and they can go out in the rain. So in the storms and pouring rain, they're out there in the rain, but yeah, once or twice a week is fine. You, you don't, you know, if they don't want a bath, they're not going to take it. How would you treat young bird sickness? Well, I found, um, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, the avian solution, the oregano product really helps. Um, sometimes the disinfectant, Vircon S, um, works amazing. It, you can put it in the water, half teaspoon to the gallon, and it's pretty amazing. They sell Vircon H2O in the UK, and they use it in like chicken farms and stuff like that. It has amazing health benefits and tends to knock virus down, and it has a positive effect on the birds. But again, it's a battle. Um, it's something we have to deal with. The biggest thing is to vaccinate them for everything when they're young. And, uh, I would keep them on, you know, at least an oregano solution. And if you have to, if they start going off, you can try the other, the Vircon, but it's, it's a tough one. Young bird sickness is tough, but, uh, the more you stay away from antibiotics, the, the more you work to natural health, I don't flock treat my birds, the better, the immune systems become, the less problems you have over time. So the, the people that treat the most with antibiotics that are always treating, you know, these, <laughs> these um, preventative treatments, which cracks me up, the treating before breeding, before the race season, during the race season, my birds see nothing in, in the antibiotics ever in the water. And uh, they're the ones that have the most problem and have the weakest pigeons because the weakest pigeons survive, the weakest pigeons breed. And then their babies are also weak genetically in the immune system. So try to go to natural health and you'll have less problems with sickness across the board. What minerals do you use? I did a mineral video. Uh, my favorite mineral of all is the natural. It's called Vitamineral. It's a pink mineral. That's the number one mineral in the sport. And I use brown mineral blocks, uh, pick pots. Uh, my brother buys Kirkpatrick black minerals. Uh, we use those all in one minerals, but that's kind of a waste. It's expensive and they put these little tiny seeds in it and the birds devour it. I do use it, but again, I'd, I'd rather, you'd be better off just all the different mineral cups, magnesium block we have in front of the birds. And I did a mineral video and if I think of it, I'll put it in the link below and uh, you can take a look at it, what I use. 
Uh, um, yellow drops. Oh, for, hi, Frank. The yellow drops have been banned here in England. I hear you mention it a few times. Can you still use it? I'm not sure why they would be banned. It's an antimicrobial. Um, they do use it in the fish industry, so you can get the same. I'm um, drawing a blank on the exact ingredient, but they use it in tropical fish, so you can still probably get it. It doesn't seem to have any um, negative effect on it, but again, that's strange. That's the first I heard. But look into the uh, the fish, the fish breeders, and they can get it for you. What's the pellet called to use for deep litter tractor supply? The burning type. Okay, I buy the wood pellets. Uh, they use in the wood burning stoves at Tractor Supply. I put that on my loft floor. It's for me. It's been the best uh, deep litter system. It breaks down. It's dry. I take the clumps out, and every couple of months I might change it out. One bag for like six dollars will cover about an eight by eight. But it's so it's just a wood pellet they sell. It's an oak pellet. There's nothing in it. It's just wood, and uh, they sell it for the wood burning stoves. Uh, let's see. Um, are you saying feed 80% barley once a day till they stop eating? Yes, I would think for someone with less experience, feed them until they start leaving a few pieces of the barley. That's it. That's had plenty for the day. Don't, don't give them any more. Because if you go back in the evening, they're going to act like they didn't eat at all. So if I could give you one tip with uh, for racing, feed the birds once a day. And only once a day during the racing season. Now I'm shipping day. I feed twice a day. I feed early and then I'll give them a little more in the afternoon. So hopefully they'll drink. But every other day, every for the racing season, once a day, or you'll tend to overfeed. But if you feed the, feed the barley mix them so they leave a few pieces of barley, you can't make a mistake. Your birds are going to have enough. The body weight will be right. And you'll fly like crazy. Um, My birds fly from 100 kilometers to 300 kilometers this year. Should I keep them thin? Well, I wouldn't say keep them thin. They're not really thin. they got to be light and buoyant. I'm shipping my birds to 600 miles, which is whatever, almost 1,000 kilometers or 1,000 kilometers, and they're not round. They're not heavy. They're, you know, they I load them with fats at the end, but they're light and buoyant and never round and full, and I'll be clocking birds 14 hours and – so you have to really master that body weight thing. If they're carrying extra weight, they fall behind. So you want to nail that body weight. I had trouble breeding a young pair. The hen will go down in the nest but wouldn't lay an egg. Do you think she may be too young? In some cases, the hen might be too young. Uh, she may breed next year. You may want to give her a set of eggs and let her raise around a baby. Sometimes that stimulates the system. The other thing what I would recommend is buy the Dr. K, the KM1 Salmonella vaccine and give her one ML twice a week for three weeks. It has an amazing immune system booster. And if she has any Salmonella or anything like that in her ovaries, it's going to clear it and she'll probably lay after that. Um, I feed my youngsters only a little food. Won't they get some problems because of nutrition deficiency? Well, you have to feed them enough. You can't, I mean, you can't starve them, but if you're feeding them until they leave a little bit barley, that's enough. And again, this isn't for the, this is during the racing season. Like, you know, we're not going to be racing until August. So I'm going to feed my birds plenty while they're growing and flying and training. And, but after that, I'll get a little more strict because I have to be competitive. I don't need them to be uh, breaking records and training tosses, I need them to be flying during the races. So you worry about the strict feeding only during the racing season. Uh, how many feet off the ground should a pigeon loft be? Rodents not get inside. Well, that's a tough one. Boy, the rodents can, those mice or whatever, they get in. So I'm not sure. I mean, I think if you can get it off the ground, all that much better. But it's going to be tough to keep the rodents out. I would, uh, you know, keep the bait stations around and still they're going to get in. Um, love your channel. What is your take on the first training session for young birds? A certain mile radius before getting them down the road to the to, to the race. I I did a uh, video on training. Uh, my first toss, I crate them up. I put them in the car. I drive them for maybe 15, 20 minutes. The first time they're in the crates in the car, they get car sick. They get nauseous. You'll see your birds up chucking. 
I bring him back to the yard. I sit him in the yard. I let them calm down. Then I let him go. Many fancy is they grab the birds. They throw them in the crates. They've never been in the crates. They throw them in the car. They've never been in the car. They go down the road. The birds are car sick. They put them on a parking lot. They let them go. The birds are frantic and they can have a disastrous toss. So watch my, um, my train in the young bird video. And it explains a lot of how I do and take my time and go different directions. And then you have to teach them to break and they don't automatically break. You have to teach them to break. If they don't get exposed to breaking, then they're probably never going to break. So it's uh, all part of you being the, you know, the coach on the babies. Uh, recently had a problem. Young birds don't want to come back in the loft. They would rather sit in a tree two to three days before coming home. That's really strange. I mean, something's probably bothering them possibly at night. You could have cats or raccoons or something hanging around. If the birds don't want to enter the loft, um, maybe when you're at work, there might be hawks hanging on the, on a flight pen or something. They seem really spooky. They don't like being out. I mean, they don't like spending the night out. So Something's going on, and um, I mean, I've had birds stay out, but usually they haven't figured out how to get in, not necessarily they don't want to get in. So there's something bothering those birds, and it's possible that rats or something are getting in the lofts at night and really spooking the birds. So give it a look. See if you can figure that out, but I think it's something happening in the loft. How often do you give me race team greens, and uh, what do I use? Well, I don't because... <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm kind of a, uh, I don't have a lot of time. I give them rabbit pellets. Greens are great. Give them, you know, give them broccoli, give them basil, um, the rich type spinach and that stuff. It's, it's awesome. Once a week is plenty, but I tend to give the birds weekly, or I should say my brother, who's a huge help to me, he gives the birds weekly rabbit pellets. I buy the rabbit pellet. That's the number one ingredient is alfalfa. And you can give the birds all the benefits of greens, Without them getting soiled, without them going bad, just give them the rabbit pellets uh, once a week or so, and it's great. They get their supplements from the greens. Uh, what about overcrowding in a loft? How much space do you need? Well, the more birds you have in it, the more you want to open it up. Um, you can watch my ventilation video about that. You need you need the air. It's tough. My loft's a good size, so I can base the birds out. You're better off having less pigeons. You're going to have more success than crowding them when you have health problems and, you know, issues with that. I mean, and I say a four by eight section, you know, 25, 30 birds is probably, you know, it's probably about right. And uh, some guys put way more, but 30 birds would probably be comfortable. And it's really tough to say. Well, that's good. That's great, Andre. I know that uh, he got a cock from me. That's a special bird. I hope he breeds you a lot of champions. I have a hen, 2021, but she doesn't want to lay any eggs. The cock wouldn't be driving hen, but yeah, like I said before, most likely something's wrong with her. She's She probably hasn't had an infection in her ovaries, and you can do two things. You can put her on a heavy dose of, say, an enrofloxin, and try to clean her out maybe 10 days. They call it Batril or Enrofloxin and see if you can knock it out. I would vaccinate with the Dr. K, the KM1 Salmonella vaccine. Give a whole ML. The dose is a 0.25. Give a whole milliliter twice a week for three weeks. And uh, it may clear her up. It's You got a shot there. But a lot of times, you know, once the ovaries are hurt, if she's not laying, then there's going to be a problem, but I would give it a try and see what happens. And you can let her raise a set of eggs and see if that stimulates her system. I had cats make it my loft before, but not this young bird team. I'll be on the watch for something. Yeah, Tyler, see if we can figure that out. Let me know if you come up with something because that's really strange. Frank, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Well, I appreciate it. Hopefully I can help. I enjoy doing it. And uh, the sport's been great to me. And I had a lot of people over the years that I try to help and I try to write articles, but that's a lot, that's a lot of work. And then my wife will look at it and say, you know, you know, it's not grammatically correct or something. So this is easier for me. And I don't know if I speak grammatically correct anyways. Let's see on the light system after racing is over. When will the birds molt? I've never raced the light system, you know, so I'm really, 
I think if you shut the lights off at the end of the season, they're probably they're going to molt their bodies again. But again, I've never messed with it, so I'm not the light system guy. And if yeah, if you guys could hit the like button, and uh, I guess it helps with the algorithms, and I appreciate it. Uh, can I just simply scare the youngsters to fly? Do they have? Um, are they just going all day around the top of the loft? Yeah, after a while, when they're hanging around for a few weeks, yeah, I've got a pole with like a uh, like a plastic bag tied at the top that I'll use to chase them up. And even with the pole, boy, they make a loop and they want to land again. So they get they get fat and lazy. So you're gonna have to chase them. And once they get used to flying and they get a little fitness, they'll start flying. But don't be afraid to scare them. And uh, again, another greens question. Uh, I use rabbit pellets with the number one ingredient is alfalfa. Greens are great. I think um, spinach is awesome. Broccoli is terrific if you can get them to eat it. I used to grow basil for them 30, 40 years ago, and it was a great, a great thing. Pepper leaves, all that stuff is good. But again, if you want to keep it simple and give them the same benefits without worrying about greens, you can just buy uh, buy rabbit pellets with the number one ingredient would be alfalfa. The other stuff is, is not anywhere as good. I uh, have have hens that lay only one egg. Yeah, I've had hens lay one egg, and sometimes they'll lay a single egg, and then they'll go back to normal. Hopefully, uh, one of my hens, I've got a a best kittle hen, and she laid uh, she laid one egg last round. It didn't hatch, so I'm hoping that's not the end of the line for her. But who knows, you know? But hopefully, she's uh, he's been driving her a while. She'll lay two this time, but it happens, and then they'll go back. I've had hens that didn't lay for a year, and then the following year they'll lay and. So sometimes it's it's tough to say what's going on with them. Uh, have you ever had a hen that can't lay eggs? Yeah, sometimes it's going to happen. You know, they might be struggling. I've had a few egg bound over the years. It's rare. I mean, I've used oil and uh, like an olive oil or something or Vaseline and put it on the tip of my finger and try to, you know, get it up inside their butt and give them some lubrication, put them in a crate and you know, it can be disastrous sometimes, and it's sad when, when that happens. Um, before races, two or three days, we should increase the fat percent of the food. No, there's no need. If you're racing from 300 miles and below, there's no need to, uh, like six hours and below, no need to increase the fat and the feed. They're, you're just going to probably send the birds too heavy to the races. Uh, they're not gonna. They're gonna fly six hours or less. Just feed them the eighty percent barley mix the day of shipping, and they'll be just fine. Uh, how much rabbit pellets? I just feed the rabbit pellets separately. I might give them like, oh boy, like a half a coffee can to thirty birds. Not a lot, you know. It's not a ton of rabbit pellets. They don't usually eat them very much. The breeders, my brother will add them to the breeders a couple times a week, and they eat them here and there. Some birds eat more, but they don't eat a lot of them. They don't like them that much, so. I don't give them a lot. You say it might even only be like 10 rabbit pellets per pigeon or something like that. How can you get the birds to peak on Saturday? You really can't. You know, you just kind of, uh, between uh, eating, exercising, and resting, you're hoping that on Saturday they can fly to the front and stay to the front and want to come home. And, you know, if, you, if you're going to have form or super form, that happens naturally. There's nothing you can do to bring on that real super form. You just want them in great condition. If they're good pigeons in great condition, the body weight's right. They'll fly to the top. They'll fly to the front. And uh, you'll have good races all the time. Uh, what's your take on beetroot powder? Any benefits? Yeah, the beetroot thing has been the, the craze the last five or six years. I'm not sure. I haven't been consistent with the beet, the beetroot powder or liquid at all i may try it again this old bird season but i i'm not sure it's supposed to add a little bit of um give them a little bit extra it definitely wouldn't hurt it's a natural product i mean i don't think you can go wrong but i don't think it's going to make the big difference of you dominating and not dominating uh, do you raise the cocks and hens together? No, my young birds are all mixed. There's no separating the sexes, all that separating sexes. And it's just, it's useless. It's a waste of time. All that motivation stuff and keeping the young, young birds, the cocks and hens separated, bring them together before and after the races. It's, it's a waste of time and effort. All that motivation is, is pretty useless in pigeons. It, you help one, you hurt 20. Uh, how's the best kettle line work for you? I just, um, 
I've had the, the, the daughter of Best Kittle just a year, just about a year. So I bred some late hatches last year. This year I'm putting her babies into the one loft races and I'm breeding from a couple of children. I've made it her to my AU convention winner from 2021. He's, um, he's gearing Starasa Blonde. And I expect, you know, I hope, hopefully they fly well, but I'm, I'm really not sure. I think they're good pigeons. If a lot of people have had success with them. And that's how you can judge good pigeons when a lot of people have had success. Also, you have to be careful when someone buys an expensive pigeon. Uh, they made it to their best pigeon. They don't made it to some, you know, average pigeon. So a lot of these pigeons that are these high dollar, high impact, high, high craze, promoted pigeons are all made it to people's best pigeons. So then they have results. So again, you have to be careful sometimes. Uh, I have a yearling that is unfurled six sets, all blank. Any advice I would go with, if it's probably a yearling cock, I would go with that. Um, again, that's salmonella. I would treat it with probably the Batril for 10 days. If it has an infection or some problem in the testes, sometimes the salmonella settles in the testes. And then I would follow up with the salmonella vaccine, the KM1, the Dr. K vaccine, one ML, um, two times a week for three weeks, and it should clear it out and then give it a try. I've had a couple of cocks over the years that didn't fertile the first year. And then all of a sudden they fertile after that. So I would give it another another try next year, and then that would probably be it. Uh, let's see. Do you still have barley when you feed D-Pure? How much barley do you mix in? You know, I've been just feeding the D-Pure from Versalaga because it's easy. I don't feed a lot of it. I think mixing your own is probably better. I haven't been able to get, get barley. I think that the whole world is now feeding barley, and I can't get any myself. So... Um, Everybody sold out of barley. And so maybe I should have stocked up on barley before I talked about it so much. But yeah, I don't think you have to really cut the deep fuel. You could cut it a little for the short races, maybe go add 20% barley to the deep pure. But if you're not overfeeding, it's 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 the deep pure mix from Versa Lager is a um, it's low fat, low protein feed, similar to what I would mix up anyways when I mix my own. Let's see. How do you get your pigeons? <coughs> Excuse me. How do you get your pigeons to dominate the race this season? Well, there's a few factors. Uh, they have to be in great condition. They have to be super healthy, and uh, they also have to have perfect body weight. So, if you can get the condition there, which is pretty easy, they don't need a ton of work if they're fed correctly. The body weight is correctly. And the health is great. They should fly to the front. They should be consistently to the front. And if you're consistently to the front, you're going to win your share of races. Now, you're not going to win them all. And I was like second in the north section last couple of weeks. And, you know, I beat by good lofts. But if you're there, if you're knocking on the door all the time, your birds are healthy. They're nutritionally complete. <laughs> Excuse me. I should have grabbed some water. They're healthy, they're nutritionally complete, and um, good immune systems, good body weight. They'll fly consistently to the front. You know, I haven't seen the bait and diet mix. I'd like to see it. It's probably um, very close or might even be better than the DPUR from Versailles Lager. If that's a diet mix, what they used to do, like, you know, our fathers and grandfathers, they would feed light to heavy, and the people are still doing it. But... Just feed that diet mix six days a week for the short distance and uh, the day of return, all the rich feeds, and then back to the diet mix. And you'll notice a really, really big difference in the results and the performance of the birds. Well, I hope uh, everybody had fun. And uh, if you'd like to share my video, I appreciate it. Tell your friends and like and subscribe. And we'll do this again another month or so. And again, thank you for coming. And I appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep it going. Thank you so much.